previously on the Sub 4 Story. It's always easier when you have no expectations. The challenge comes when you become the one they watch. The sophomore year ended with a disappointing race at New England, which really got me angry. So, I asked my dad to put together a summer training plan that would get me to the next level. He had me slowly build up my mileage while still doing a lot of hard workouts. I started doing a lot of hill workouts, which I had never done before. The hardest workout I did that summer was 20 grinder hill repeats and the hill was 300 meters long. Some of the best colleges in the US were starting to reach out to me and everything suddenly began to feel real. I came into junior year more focused and more ready than ever. I noticed my hair was starting to get long again. It was about time I grew it back. Summer training had clearly paid off, and I wanted everyone to see my fitness. It was a long shot, but my goal was to be top five at the state open meet. Let's go, Every meet, I would go right to the front and push the pace. I didn't care how big or small the race was, I just wanted to win. I had made it to the next level, but was I pushing it too hard? Something was wrong. Right before the start of championship season, I started to feel super fatigued. I wasn't sick, but I couldn't sleep, and my body felt exhausted. On the day of our league meet, my body felt no better. I tried to stay relaxed, but I only felt worse as the race continued. Bodies were passing me left and right, and I couldn't do anything. It was a nightmare. I finished in 37th place, right behind my teammate. I wanted to end my season right after that but my coach told me I was just overworked and I would feel better in a week. Alex Osberg was back to full health, so my goal was to key off of him, but my body still felt off. Two miles, I felt like the race was going to be another disaster. I knew I needed to be top 12 to make the state meet, so I tried to focus my best. Eighth place. I lived to see another day. I won this meet as a sophomore, and now I could barely get 8th. I had one week before State Open to figure it out. I ran super easy all week heading into the meet. Right before the race went off, my dad pulled me aside and told me, 
Run. Don't think. Just run. All I could do was focus on the moment. The three best runners in the state took the race out fast, but my body was finally feeling good again. I was in fifth place at the mile. The runner in fourth made a hard move at two miles, but I went with it. Chris Alvarado from Fairfield Prep pulled away in the last 100 to win. Alex finished strong for third. Fifth place. It was a miracle. I walked away from that cross country season having learned two incredibly valuable lessons. The first is that you need to control your hard efforts. If you want to do well late in the season, you can't kill yourself in every workout and race. The second and more important lesson is to not put pressure on yourself. Running is a lot more simple when you don't think. Just go out there and run. But cross country season was over now, it was finally time to focus on track. I felt like a freshman again my first indoor track season. It was so much fun. My coach had me focus a lot on my speed and getting better at the shorter events. I got a chance to run the 600 on our indoor basketball court track. I broke the facility record and ran 125. The main focus that winter was running a fast 1K time and learning how to compete at a high level. At our league meet, I first ran 234. I also got to compete on our SMR relay. That was a fun race. I had the same events at the Class L Championships and I took care of business. At the state open meet, I thought I had a chance to win. But this sophomore phenom, Randy Nish, shocked everyone. Second place would have to do. A week later, in a stacked 1K at New England, I was able to play sixth with a massive PR. That indoor season was all about having fun and learning how to race. The season was a huge success, but I still wanted to race a mile. For the last race of the year, my coach signed me up for the Emerging Elite Mile to do for fun. The race was super tactical for the most part, but I ran smart and found myself in second place at the bell. I had a chance with 100 to go. It was my first big win on the big stage. I ran 418, but I closed fast, so I knew I was ready to do something special during outdoor season. Between indoor and outdoor season, I spent six weeks on my treadmill focusing on form. I set a metronome to 180 beats per minute and matched my cadence to the beats. My dad came up with this exercise because he wanted me to improve my form and efficiency. Six weeks later, and I felt like a completely different runner. I was ready for the first invitational. It was a cold afternoon in April, so we likely wouldn't run fast, but Alex was in the race and he liked to take the pace.
It was a two-man race by 400 meters. Just me and Alex, like the old days. I focused on my cadence. I could hear the metronome in my head. My confidence grew with a little over a lap to go. I decided to take the race. I felt strong, powerful, relaxed. This was a statement. I was happy about the win, but I knew I could run much faster. Three weeks later, under the lights at the Danbury Dream End Pipe, I ran my fastest mile time of the year. I won the race by .01 seconds. Trust me, if I had the footage I would show you all. Maybe it was really just a dream. I had been running great all outdoor season. At our league meet, I ran an 800 PR of 154, so I had some of the best mile and 800 times in the state. But Chris Alvarado was the guy. He was one of the best all-around runners in the country, in cross country and track. He was headed to Georgetown University in the fall, a top Division I program. We would square up in the mile. With 100 to go, it was just us. I wanted to beat the guy.